Hello, sixth graders. Welcome to Big Ideas Math, Section 5.2, Ratio Tables, Lesson. Pause while you write Section 5.2 Lesson in your math notebook. Pause again while you write today's lesson objective in your math notebook. The lesson objective is make ratio tables and use them to solve problems. Today we'll be starting on page 198 in your math textbook. Example 1, completing ratio tables. Find the missing values in each ratio table, then write the equivalent ratios. In letter A, we have pens and pencils. We have one pen for every three pencils. So our relationship here is one to three. So we'll be taking the top number the pens and multiplying that by 3 to get the bottom number, the pencils. So 1 times 3 is 3, 2 times 3 is 6, and then to get from 9 up to the top number we have to go backwards, so we have to use inverse operations, we have to divide by 3. So 9 divided by 3 is 3. So notice that you have equivalent ratios here of 1 to 3, 2 to 6, and 3 to 9. Letter B is a little bit trickier, but we can still figure it out. We need to think about what an equivalent ratio would be, or an equivalent fraction, if you think of 4 over 6 as a fraction, would be if we wanted to have 6 as the denominator. So if you multiply 6 times 2, you get 12. And then to get to the missing number, you would also multiply by 2. And 4 times 2 gives us 8. And then you have to be careful because 8 times 2 doesn't give us 24. But you need to think about, well, 8 times 3 does give us 24. So that would we mean we would need to multiply 12 times 3 to get the number of cats that go in this box, and that would be 36. Another option is to add columns in here and go up by twos so that you have a longer chart. Letter A says, if you, we go back to letter A, you can also use repeated addition with the original ratio to find the missing values, which is true as well. The equivalent ratios are 1 to 3, 2 to 6, and 3 to 9. And if we look back at letter B, it tells us we can use multiplication, which is what we did. So the equivalent ratios are 4 to 6, 8 to 12, and 24 to 36. Example 2, we're going to be making a ratio table. We're making sugar water for our hummingbird feeder. A website indicates to use four parts of water for every one part of sugar. We use 20 cups of water. How much sugar do we need? We can solve this problem by using equivalent ratios. The ratio of water to sugar is four parts to one part. So for every four cups of water, we need one cup of sugar. Find an equivalent ratio with 20 parts of water. So method one is use a ratio table and addition. We can think of making a larger batch of sugar water as combining several batches of four to one mixtures. So we can use addition to obtain 20 in the water column. So as you can see, they've made the table for us. We have 
water in the first batch with four cups and sugar with one cup. In the second batch we have eight cups of water and two cups of sugar. Third batch we have 12 cups and three cups. And the fourth batch we have 16 and four. And finally we have 20 cups of water and five cups of sugar. The ratio 20 to five is equivalent to four to one. So we need five cups of sugar. Method two, we can use a ratio table and multiplication. So we multiplied the amount of water in the recipe by five because 20 divided by four equals five. So we need to multiply the amount of sugar by five. Multiply each part of the ratio in the original recipe by five. So it shows us how to do that right there. The ratio 20 to 5 is equivalent to 4 to 1, so we need 5 cups of sugar. Let's take a look at our study tip. It says in example 2, method 1, notice that you can eliminate a step by adding columns 2 and 3 to obtain 8 plus 12 equals 20 cups of water for 2 plus 3 equals 5 cups of sugar. So we could have made this a little bit shorter by combining these two columns. Moving on to example three, using a ratio table, the nutrition facts label on a box of crackers shows that there are 240 milligrams of sodium in every 36 crackers. We eat 15 crackers. How much sodium did we consume? The ratio of sodium to crackers is 240 to 36. So we're going to use a ratio table to find an equivalent ratio with 15 crackers. So, the, so we start out with the ratio that's given to us in the problem, 240 and 36, so 240 milligrams of sodium per 36 crackers, and we cut that in half, so we're dividing that by two, so we have 120 milligrams in our second box, and that means we divide the crackers into also, so that's 18 crackers. And then we divide that by 6. So, so we now have 20 milligrams of sodium and 3 crackers. And that's not enough crackers, but we can multiply 3 by 5 to get 15 crackers, which is just the right amount. And then we take 20 and multiply that by 5 and we have 100 milligrams of sodium. So the ratio 100 to 15 is equivalent to 240 to 36. So we consume 100 milligrams of sodium with our snack of 15 crackers. Letter B says you eat 21 crackers. How much sodium do you consume? Notice that you can add the two middle columns in the table above. So we can take 18 and 3, that makes 21 crackers, and we can add the sodium from those, which is 120 plus 20 equals 140 milligrams of sodium in 21 crackers. Example 4, 
we're using a ratio table. We mix three pints of yellow paint for every four pints of blue paint to make green paint. We use ten pints of blue paint. How much green paint do we make? The ratio of yellow paint to blue paint is three to four. Use a ratio table to find an equivalent ratio with ten parts of blue paint. So we are going to divide 3 by 2, which gives us a fraction, and 4 by 2, which gives us 2 pints of blue paint. And then we're going to take that and multiply by 5 because we want to have 10 pints of blue paint. And when we do that, we end up with 7 and 1 half pints of yellow paint. So we make 17 and a half pints of green paint because that's the yellow paint and the blue paint combined. Your assignment for this lesson is to complete the following on your own problems. They are also found on pages 198 to 200 of your textbook. Show your work and be prepared to share during our next class. Please remember to earn credit for viewing this flipped lesson. You need to complete your exit slip back at the website. You also need to come to our next class prepared with the journal pages that we did during the flipped lesson or any other work that we did for the flipped lesson completed. You also need to be prepared with any work that was assigned in the flipped lesson completed and be ready with any questions you have for your teacher and as always have a good attitude. We'll see you tomorrow in class. Remember to earn credit for viewing this flipped lesson. You must complete your exit slip. You must come to our next class prepared with your journal pages or any other work that we did during the flipped lesson completed. And you need to be prepared with any work that was assigned during the flipped lesson completed. Be prepared with any questions you have about the content of the flipped lesson and a good attitude. We'll see you in class tomorrow.